All right, so we're going to end with one last video for today on spherical coordinates, uh, writing triple integrals and spherical coordinates. So in the, in the previous video, I introduced the spherical coordinate system. So these values, rho, telling you which sphere you're on, phi, measuring this sort of azimuthal angle, so this kind of is essentially latitude, and then uh, theta, the equatorial angle, giving you your longitude. So this, of course, is just the polar angle. Um, we worked out the relationship between x, y, z, and rho, phi, and theta. That's sitting here. And here's, a, here's sort of a, an attempt at kind of explaining where the volume element comes from. Okay, um, You'll find a picture in the textbook that does a little bit better job than what I'm managing here. Um, but the basic idea is, you know, you kind of take the, the picture that you had in, in polar coordinates, but it's thinking in terms of almost kind of like the yz plane, that you have this length here, which is your delta rho. Um, this arc here, well, you're out a distance of rho, and you're going through an angle of delta phi, so that arc has a length of rho times delta phi. Uh, this arc here um, comes from varying theta, right? But that comes from varying theta and, and the length of the arc, right? This sh you can kind of think down here that the length of that arc comes from, well, you're, you're varying theta, but you're, you're varying theta in a, in a plane which is parallel to the xy plane, and the distance out that way is, in fact, not rho, but r, the polar r. And we saw that rho, or sorry, that r can be written as rho sine phi. So the length of, of this bit is going to be r times delta theta, like it was for polar coordinates, but r is rho sine phi. So we get uh, rho sine phi times delta theta for the length of that piece, right? So we think of it as almost like a little cube with, with these. So what you get is that your, your, your dv in the integral, there's, notice there's, there's one rho here, there's another one there. So it's rho squared, and then there's that sine phi, okay, and then d rho, d phi, d theta, okay, like so. So it's, uh, it's a little bit more complicated than polar or cylindrical coordinates where there's just that extra r to keep track of. Now there's this whole piece that you have to keep track of. Um, so that, that makes life a little bit more challenging. Uh, let's... Um, Let's do one example with this, and then, uh, and then we'll, we'll call it a day. Okay, just one quick example, because I'm already over time. Um, let's do this one. The volume between... Um, Z equals the square root of 8 minus X squared minus Y squared, and Z equals root x squared plus y squared, okay? So we, we saw this one in an earlier video, and we, we did it, in fact, and we set things up in cylindrical coordinates. This is one of our examples that kind of led us into, into considering cylindrical coordinates. Uh, so what we can do, so this we know is a, is a cone, and this one we know, uh, this is just x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 8, okay? So there, there's kind of two elements here. There's a sphere. There's a sphere of radius 2 root 2, okay? And there's this cone, which comes out to meet it. And they intersect in this circle. Um, now, how do I describe a cone? I mentioned in the last video that um, cones are what you get when you set phi equal to a constant. Um, so let's see, z equals r. What is the angle that you have here? Well, this angle is going to be, uh, let's see, so z, we can think of it this way. z is r, right, because that's just r. Um, so that means that um, rho cos phi is equal to rho sine phi. Okay, well, rho is not zero except at the apex of the cone, so we could cancel the rows. When is sine phi equal to cos phi? When phi is equal to pi over four. Um, so the way we think of, of describing this region in, in spherical coordinates is that 
you start at the origin, right? So you start down at the origin. Let's get one more color. And, and so we think about the range for rho first. Rho starts down here at zero, and we go out until we hit the sphere. So rho is between zero and the radius of the sphere, which is two root two. Okay, phi, well, phi, we wanna, we wanna sweep out the whole, the whole thing, right? Um, and you might think that you should go from minus pi over four to plus pi over four, but you only go from zero to pi over four. Why? Well, let's think about it. Once you have this bit here, right, each, each piece over here then gets, gets swept around because we're going we're gonna to still revolve around, right? We still have theta. Um, so we can still take this, revolve it around using theta, right? And theta can run the full range from 0 to 2 pi. And that's going to generate our, our object. Um, so the volume, and again, I'll just set it up. I'll leave it for you to finish because I, um, I need to wrap up here because I'm over time. Uh, the volume is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to pi over 4, the integral from 0 to 2 root 2 of the volume element, rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta. Okay. I'll let you take it from there. Uh, it's not too bad because, in fact, you can, you can split things up, right? You're going to do the row integral first because all notice that everything here is constants, right? So you're essentially integrating over, over you know, like a box. Um, so one-third row cubed, you plug in the two root two for that. Um, antiderivative for sine is going to be negative cos. You put in the bounds there. Um, theta, well, that's just going to give you that multiple of two pi. And then you got her done. All right, that's all for this week. Um, next week, I'll see if I can fit in maybe one or two more spherical examples. We'll talk a little bit about change of variables, and then we're on to vector calculus.